Hello again, I'm Travis Schneider with RE Squared Robotics, and in today's episode, we're going to have a panel discussion focusing on diversity, equity, and inclusion. Often on the robotics engineering experience, we feature guests who talk about a specific technical topic and their own personal uh, journey and professional journey for that matter. Uh, but in today's discussion, we wanted to talk more about how people from a variety of different backgrounds can get started with their professional journey. So joining me in today's conversation are Amy Tisdale, Head of Talent at RE Squared Robotics, Jurgen Pedersen, President and CEO of RE Squared Robotics, and last but not least, Nate Broadus from Catalyst Connection. So welcome all. Uh, Nate, let's get started with you. Could you tell me a little bit about your role at Catalyst Connection? Sure, just so uh, I would probably assume that most people in general aren't too familiar with Catalyst, uh, Catalyst Connection. So just to give a little bit of background, um, we're an economic development agency nonprofit in southwestern Pennsylvania that represents small and medium manufacturers. Um, southwestern Pennsylvania is the highest paying region in the entire country for manufacturing jobs. And um, by helping manufacturers stay strong and, you know, hire more people, create more jobs, we, we do our, our best at keeping the region healthy. To give a little bit of background about myself and my role at Catalyst, what I do is I manage a program called the Real Jobs Initiative that was created to help individuals who have technical aptitude and, in, and an interest in manufacturing um, find a pathway to careers in, in manufacturing, robotics, and advanced manufacturing um, where they may not have had those pathways before. Okay, great. And Jurgen, what's RE Squared's role in the Real Jobs Initiative. How did RE Squared get involved in this project with Catalyst? Uh, well, I'm on the board of directors of Catalyst Connection, and, and one of the goals uh, of Catalyst is to uh, increase diversity in the manufacturing work workforce uh, within within the region. And as soon as we found out about the the Real Jobs program, RE Squared. Uh, naturally wanted to be uh, a part of that and uh, increase um, opportunity for underserved or underrepresented groups to provide a pathway into high tech uh, uh, positions here at RE Squared and that's exactly what we've been doing. Great, thanks. And Amy, maybe from a recruiting perspective, how has RE Squared benefited from the Real Jobs Initiative to date, and how many people have we hired thus far, and what roles? And do you expect to continue utilizing this program to br bring in uh, new talent? Yes. Um, can you all still hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, so, uh, from a recruiting perspective, um, we've certainly benefited from the the Real Jobs Initiative. Um, to date, we've hired. Um, two individuals really uh, one individual uh, who started with us in a temporary role um, just kind of uh, doing some uh, cleanup work around one of our labs um, who you know did a really excellent job we ended up offering her a regular full-time job as a lab technician um, from what i understand she's still doing extremely well and she um, even runs our 3d printing um, program and then we've also hired a kind of as a um, part-time data collection analyst for um, one of the projects that we're working on um, through through some of our engineers um, and uh, just getting ramped up but uh, he's he's doing a good job as well so um, from from my perspective in recruiting absolutely we've benefited the reason we've benefited is because um, it's kind of a give and take um, while you know those individuals maybe are benefiting from being able to work a job that maybe they wouldn't have otherwise um, had access to, we're benefiting from getting, you know, a completely different uh, frame of mind. Um, I think sometimes whenever you're able to benefit uh, from getting individuals who don't come from, you know, straight from academia or exactly where we get most of our hires, you really get this great mix of a diverse thought, uh, thought process, which, you know, at the end, it just helps everything and it helps you produce a more well-rounded well product um, and also it helps employ morale. Um, so I, I would expect that we would continue to utilize this program. That's great. 
And Nate, maybe jumping back to you, how, how do you think um, this initiative will help Pittsburgh's growing manufacturing industry? Will it help us retain uh, you know, intellectual capital within Pittsburgh? Um, do you see this providing new opportunities for residents and up underrepresented groups? Yeah, yeah, and I think that the, the second bullet point really hit it on the head, Travis. Um, creating opportunities for underrepresented people. And one of the things that we found, and I think that it's really evident in some of the uh, RE, RE2's recent hires and some of our other recent uh, job placements, is that there's a lot of very talented people out here who haven't aren't necessarily well connected to the areas in which they're well talent, very talented. Um, everybody's seen the movie Goodwill Hunting. I'm, I'm assuming with Matt Damon, right? Like you know, like there's there's a genius down the hall every you know every day, but nobody ever told that guy he was a genius. You know what I mean? Nobody ever told that guy that he was supposed to be or that lady that she was supposed to be over here you know, with, you know, taking advantage of certain opportunities. And I think that that's, that's really one of the, the most encouraging things is that, you know, in seeking out folks who are, uh, you know, raising their hands and volunteering to be a part of this program, really finding some really amazing self-driven people who have just, you know, accrued in just a wide breadth of knowledge and skills and, you know, just life experience that I think everybody's company would benefit from. And, uh, you know, just to piggyback on what Amy was saying, that to be just the, the ability to bring in the diverse experiences and diverse uh, diversity of thought is really just a, a privilege for any company, especially someone who's looking to innovate. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. And, and Nate, how do you see the, the Real Jobs Initiative improving diversity, equity, and inclusion within the Pittsburgh region? Sure. So, are, are you talking about like the diversity, equity, inclusion of this of the city? Uh, other, uh, I guess, my question is in the reference of uh, other companies, maybe in tech within Pittsburgh's region sure. as well. Okay. So, um, that's really one of the things that we're looking to do is that you know, we're looking to be able to to prove that the idea that we that we all have that you know, you, if you are willing to work with somebody, if you know you're willing to, you know, provide some. Uh, some training, if you're willing to, uh, to to hire from these diverse groups, that there is benefit to that. And by demonstrating, you know, with these companies who have raised their hand and have 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 made a choice to uh, to participate in this program, by demonstrating the the value of you know these these people who have been traditionally undervalued by uh, by work in this region, um, I think that that will go a long way towards not only um, benefiting the individual, the job seeker, but towards, uh, you know, growing, growing our companies and, you know, pr providing great benefit to the, to the region of, uh, as a whole. Great. And maybe jumping back to Jurgen for, for some of your perspective, what, what specifically are RE Squared's diversity, equity, and inclusion goals? And, and how do you think this helps us as a company? Yeah, I, I think in terms of diversity, um, you know, Overall, we want to increase our diversity. A, a diverse workforce is a, is a strong one. Having different lenses when you're developing a product makes a stronger product, makes a stronger company. Uh, in terms of um, equity, we want to create a, an equitable, equitable uh, work environment uh, and experience for all of our employees. Uh, we want to, in terms of pay equity, in terms of advancement opportunities, um, you know, equity is at the core of who RE Squared is. And then thirdly, um, in terms of in, in inclusivity, um, by we want to provide every employee with a safe and uh, welcoming environment, um, you know, no matter what their background, no matter what their race, no matter what their religion, et cetera. Uh, we want everyone to feel welcome and, and included and excited about, the, you know, the impact that this company is uh, making on the world. And, and Jurgen, I know you know RE Squared's certainly taken it one step forward and uh, has kind of established this anti-racist uh, committee within the company. Can you tell the audience a little bit about the the mission and vision for that committee and what its goals are? Yeah, you know the the vision of the of the anti-racist committee is to you know have RE Squared be entirely void of individual and institutional racism, um, and then go one step beyond that and you know do what we can do 
to uh, help dismantle racism in our community. Uh, and the way we're doing that is to, um, you know, eradicate this in individual and institutional racism um, by examining behaviors, processes, uh, practices, um, and do it through an anti-racist lens, um, and then create, you know, action based on those observations um, to ensure that RE Square is a, an anti-racist company. See, I, I think that's really cool, especially coming from like the the CEO of a robotics company, right? Like you guys are at work creating the future every day at work, but also we're creating, you know, the hopefully the future of thought, right? The future of uh, of equity in the region, the future of how, you know, big wigs, at, you know, big companies all across the city think about, you know, how do I look out for my people and how do I look out for other people as well, right? I think that that's, that's just incredibly powerful. So it's awesome. And if I can really quickly um, just kind of piggyback off of Nate, the other thing too that I think that that does, because we have such a strong top-down approach for things like zero tolerance policies when it comes to racism or anything like that, I think it really opens up um, all of the employees, no matter you know where we came from, what color we are, how old we are, to feel comfortable to be to come into that space. Um, because that that uh, committee is completely voluntary. So I think um, it speaks volumes of leadership of the company um, and you know just uh, how we work as a team that these people feel um, they don't feel threatened, they don't feel forced. you know they these are people that genuinely want to learn and you know do better. And um, that's that I think has a lot to do with, again how you know our vision starts at the top and rolls down rather than starting at middle management and trying to go up and down or something like that that's a big difference that makes perfect sense and, and maybe amy jumping back to you once more you know coming from a human resources perspective how would you kind of grade us as a company in terms of our performance as it pertains to diversity equity and inclusion at re squared yeah, I mean, I, I've said this uh, from the time I was interviewing how impressed that I that I was, um, especially, you know, I've worked for some large companies, some of the largest companies um, in the local area, and the way that um, RE Squared um, handles just a really like uh, it, it just no nonsense comes to come up, comes to mind whenever I think of the way that we kind of approach this, but um, there's no kind of tiptoeing around these issues. We stand for what we stand for. Um, you can stand for those things with us or not. Um, at the same time, uh, we're very open, I feel like. Um, and leader, again, leadership is very open and it has to start with leadership because, you know, if you're afraid to talk or you're afraid of retaliation from your boss, none of this other stuff will matter. Um, so the biggest difference that I've seen, and I've only been here for, you know, a short amount of time, um, is just the complete willingness of leaders to really jump in and have the difficult conversations. Um, you know, it's not even process wise, it's more so um, kind of the feelings behind uh, the HR components at RE Squared. This is not a check the box initiative. This is our culture. This is how we want to live and work at RE Squared and it's not going to go away. And in fact, we're gonna continue to try to evolve this. So. Um, in my humble opinion, I mean, this, it blows a lot of companies out of the water um, in terms of how we approach, uh, you know, kind of what our beliefs and thoughts are in that perspective. Yeah, and, and maybe I'll, I'll jump sorry. in there too, just to piggyback on that. I mean, you, you, you hit on the core, Amy, that it's about our values, right? Values of a, con of a, a company are what's important. And our if I could distill our values of trust, respect, integrity, and positivity into one thing, it means people first, right? So um, when you have that mindset of you got you take care of your people and you make them feel welcome, you make them feel empowered, uh, you um, that that's what is the essence of RE squared, and um, that that permeates all aspects of the business. And, and you know helps welcome in anyone uh, no matter who they are or where they come from. So I do uh, over the summer I helped out with the summer learn the Pitt city of Pittsburgh summer learning arm program and I did some uh, like resume job 
workshops with the kids. And one of the common themes was that like, if you want to get a job, one of the best ways to get a job is to be someone that people don't mind hanging out with for eight hours a day. Right. And I think that, I think that one of the ways to be a great employer is to be a place where like, Hey, I don't mind coming here and spending my time here eight hours a day and being around these people. Right. Like you were saying, like, I feel safe. I feel respected. I feel like my beliefs are, are respected. And I think that by creating that environment, like you're positioning yourself. And I mean, RE squared is always like gets rated as one of the top employers, you know, but, uh, you know, as, as a, as a map for other employers that are trying to figure out how do we get there? Right. I think that, you know, taking some of these principles, you know, like we, we work to create an anti-racist environment, even though, you know, we're still working on making, uh, making our company incredibly diverse. It's, it's important that, you know, we, even even in environments that aren't incredibly diverse, that racist thoughts aren't allowed to grow and, and fester and persist. And I think that, uh, you know, by creating that and by, you know, using that as a model for other uh, other companies, I think that that's really going to be the transformation that you were talking about earlier, earlier, Travis. Great. And thanks for that, Nate. Well, I, I think, you know, in general, we covered a lot in our discussion today, but before we wrap up, Nate, for people who might be interested in the Real Jobs Initiative, how would you recommend that they get involved? Definitely. Um, I would. If, so if you're a uh, if, if you're a job seeker, I would have you head over to um, the makingyourfuture.org website. That's makingyourfuture.org and head to the find a job page and you can reach out to me directly from there. Um, if you are a company and you're interested in figuring out how you can reach out to different groups of applicants than you've previously uh, been, than you've been talking to traditionally. If you're trying to figure out how you can um, find new, find training opportunities for, uh, for, your, for your new hires, if you're trying to figure out how you can, uh, how we can come together and, and create a plan in the, reg as in the region for you know, diversifying our companies and creating you know, new equitable opportunities, I would just ask for you to reach out to me via email. Uh, my email is nbroadus at catalystconnection.org. So I guess that's it. Sounds great. Well, thanks everyone for your time today. I, I certainly appreciate it. And um, I'm sure we'll talk again soon. Hey, thanks so thank much, you. Jurgen. Thanks for the opportunity. Thanks, Amy and Travis. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Since 2001, RE Squared Robotics has remained committed to our mission to develop innovative technologies that make a positive impact on the world. RE Squared is a leader in the design, development, and manufacture of human-like robotic technology, solving the most challenging applications in the world. If you would like to be contacted about a robotics application, please email us at myrobots at resquared.com. That's M-Y-R-O-B-O-T-S at resquared.com. To stay up to date with the latest RE Squared news, visit our website at www.resquared.com, or you can always follow us on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. If you'd like to see more videos like this, or videos featuring actual RE Squared robots, please subscribe to this channel on YouTube.